Light the candle. Let's go. Let's do this. We're in chapter five. This is coming from our heart. This is not coming from somebody asking us to do this. We believe that this is one of the most important conversations we can have right now. We want to invite you on a journey. Yeah, absolutely. A conversation. Um, you know, this isn't just for us. All right. Well, first of all, we want to invite you along with this conversation. Scott already mentioned it, but please buy the book, buy the book. Our goal, Scott, as as we've said many times, but let's take a minute and talk about this. Our goal is to take this book and help put some wheels to it. Yeah. Digest it and let's make it uh, applicable. Yeah. 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 The the book very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It it, it was... it, it, it rightly did not give an answer as to how this works. Right. It asks a very important question, right? Right. Are we adequately preparing the kids today for to, to thrive in a culture of 2050? Mm-hmm. And will they be able, be able to stand, right, with that spine and to love? And we're going to talk about that spine and heart a little bit today. And yeah. And to love that culture that's going to be largely against them. And are we doing enough? And so that's that's really the framework. But it doesn't answer that. I mean, it, there is some, you know, maybe some prescriptive oh, things in there help, certainly right? as we go along. But but the reality is, is it, it's, you know, what's the impact of this question in your setting? Right. Because we're learning as we go here that it's the answer is maybe different. It is different for every church. There's things right. we can learn from each other, which is why we want you to be a part of this conversation because we want to learn from you. But it was our burden and our goal to just go chapter by chapter, maybe. We've had a couple <laughs> chapters that were, were yeah, two times. Yeah, a couple months maybe or whatever. We'll yeah. see how this one goes. But our goal is just to take our time. We want to put some some wheels to that and help you guys just really think through that. Uh, again, knowing and understanding we don't have all the answers either. We want to learn from you. So that's why we need right. you to be a part of the conversation. We need you to be in the chat. So please do that. And as always, this thing started out with uh, YouTube for me. Right. Uh, just hit a milestone. And I know for some people it's not a big deal. <laughs> but for me and my little channel, it is uh, 9,000 views and wow! So I'm I'm thankful for that. Nine thousand opportunities great. to speak into somebody's life that I wouldn't have had. Channel is growing. If you enjoy this content, uh, please jump over there and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. It would encourage. Don't you do me. like a weekly? I do normally. Last week I was sick, thought. but it's just right. uh, that's it. Thinking out loud. It gives me yep. as a pastor an opportunity to share things that I normally wouldn't share uh, necessarily from the pulpit. So, uh, okay. yeah, so it, I do it in, in different creative ways. Uh, obviously, sitting here in the studio a lot, but but I do other things. And as you well. invited me in. I mean, that was, oh, yeah, that you're, was fun. You're on quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, you're yeah my, you time. were my first guest, and you are yeah, but my. You, you turned it over almost, to me at one point. Yeah. We'll have to do that again. <laughs> so, fun. pretty but cool. I, I got an invite uh, in October. I'm, uh, I am recording a podcast now oh. with a, a podcast that's produced by Glenn Beck. Neat. So, yeah, so that's a Very pretty cool. neat opportunity. So Great. good, good opportunity to share. So uh, yeah, excited about that. So um, as we keep going here, let's uh, let's not leave. A, uh, well, no, uh, <laughs> we are just kind of off today, aren't we? A little bit. Just we'll not. get her together. So resilient conversation <laughs> with Scott and PJ. If you're watching over on YouTube, this is not live on YouTube, but this will be posted to YouTube for the rewatch. If you are watching over on YouTube. You you want to go over to our Facebook page, like our Facebook page, be a part of it there. That's where it live streams every month. We do a monthly live stream. Right. So if you're finding me there, if you're finding us there, please jump over there to that Facebook page. And then last but not least, of course, hey, Scott. Hey, yeah. I want to Northern Michigan. Great place for you to go and uh, a resource to you. I like to share what things we're doing in the field. Uh, other resources and tips for uh, make, uh, making resilient disciples and uh, working not only just your club, but beyond that. We have bright, you know, Awana has mm-hmm. bright now and other uh, opportunities. So we just had CDF. We do Awana ministry conferences uh, that are advertised there and trainings uh, t- 
for you, your leaders, to be better equipped to make resilient child disciples. So it's a great place to go and get some answers. Do they get, have get to live in northern Michigan? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> We've got people all over. It's kind of where it started, right? Certainly. That's where yep, you're, yep. you live. Well, and as ministry. a missionary here in northern Michigan, that's, you know, right. it's my area, but uh, the reach right. goes beyond. So if you're not from Michigan, everything is uh, up north, right? Scott, you talk yeah. about going up north. I talk about going up north. It just means that our up north is different. <laughs> That's right. right. For me, I kind of consider where up north starts is about Cadillac, which is where right. you live. Well, so. according to my area, it's like northern Grand Rapids. <laughs> <laughs> and people are like, wait, I'm in Grand Rapids. This isn't northern Michigan. <laughs> right. But I live north of Grand Rapids as well. And I have people say, you know, well, oh, yeah, yeah, I used to live up north. Yeah, say. right, yeah. right, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, if you live in the UP, what's up north? Canada. Okay. Well, that's, <laughs> anyways, wow, we are digressing, but it's so much fun. All right. Well, hey, let's jump into it. Great conversation today. And I have mentioned, we mentioned it last week. If you've seen it, if you've seen Facebook, you've seen it. Pro- I know probably my favorite chapter, uh, possibly one of your favorites, if we could pick a favorite. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff in here, but just so much in here. Uh, and just before we, we really dive into this, I want to say, I, if you saw the thumbnail, the, sum, the thumbnail says that we are fire carriers. The, right. the, I think the, the chapter challenge is, are you a fire carrier? But my point in this, as I read that, is I think we're all fire carriers. It just depends on what kind of fire or how hot the fire is, right? Because even if, if, if we're very apathetic, what are we passing on? Right. <laughs> We're passing Apathy. that on. Yeah. Right. So, so I think it's important for us to realize we are all passing something on, whether we mean to or not. So let's make sure we're passing right. on the right stuff. Right. So Scott, tell us about fire carriers. What is a fire carrier? Yeah. So a fire carrier is, uh, you know, someone who is uh, passing along that uh, flame of Christ, right? Okay. Where did uh, we get this from? Where did they, where did they get this from? The authors? Well, from take us back in history. God. No, Back the, to Genesis. the physical, the physical side. The, oh yeah, a story of yeah, the history uh, yeah, of the Native Americans, yes. right? They uh, they would uh, take uh, and and I in multiple cultures they would right. take an ember, right? And right. when they were to travel to go from one place to the next, they would take this ember. This was their their transportation of this concept of fire, which was right. you know they didn't have lighters, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, you know blow torches and stuff. We went camping, and all of us pull, pulled out these you know. These <laughs> Yeah, butane things. Well, so any h- fire how they did that to uh, you know from move from one place to a next is they had a little ember and they carried it mm-hmm. in there and they you know every once in a while little you know it blew out and just make sure it's still going mm-hmm. and then when they got to their destination they that little ember you know became a a, a, a fire a, yep. and provided heat provided them a way to cook and had you know gave them life really. And then, and then they would take another ember from that fire oh, yeah. and take it on to the next one, yep. which we see exactly that when Paul tells Timothy, right? Yep. Go find somebody and carry the fire to them so they can carry the fire to somebody else. Good. So, yeah, now let's talk about it. Yeah, and how so that really right. plays yeah. out for us, you know. And I love that, you know, analogy. You know, it, it really it rings true because, you know, that the ember, right, starts as an ember. And... Uh, we need to breathe that uh, life into the ember mm-hmm. and, you know, just as, you know, God breathes life into us and us into the church. It, it takes How do we action. breathe life into an ember? Well, we, we feed it. How? We feed, we, well, we, we, I mean, we blow on it, but right. we also give it, we also give it, you know, uh, fuel. Right. And so as, as a believer, in our spiritual it takes life, action. what is that? What gives us fuel? What I'm setting you up. The word of God. Yeah, there you go. Okay, (laughs) okay. Okay, I'm just trying to to work this out. This is, yeah. (laughs) Right? What is, because we say that all the time, right? Right. Well, we need to blow on it. We need, but what does that mean? Right. That means get yourself in church on Sunday, right? Be in the fellowship of other believers. Yep. Who help help that, right? Be in the word. Do all of those things, right? Spiritual growth comes with work. It takes time and effort and work. Uh, so yeah, if we just let that go, it's it good. dies out. Yeah. Uh, we, I went camping actually this past weekend, uh, up to uh, picture rocks with, we do this annual boys trip, uh, f- with, uh, my brothers and some friends and they have, you know, their, their boys that come along and we, we hike in about a mile and a half. And, uh, this time was really fun. We, uh, I, w- I got this log, it's a cedar log. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Hey, I'm going to, I want to make a cup out of this. So how do I do this? I'm in the woods. You know, I don't, I'm not going to whittle a cup, right? Mm-hmm. Come to find out you take an, you take an ember and you put an ember on that 
that log, the side of the log, and you blow on it over just a little bit of time, that starts burning. And it burns a hole all the way deep down inside of this th- thing, and it actually caught too much fire, and the whole thing kind of burst oh. up in flames. But uh, it, re- it really kind of painted a picture for me to, to recognize that, yeah, it it takes action on mm-hmm. our part uh, to to really fan that flame without me continuing to blow on that thing. And I was getting winded. I was smoking my face. <laughs> You know, I was like, this is probably not a healthy thing to do, <laughs> but I, I can still smell in my nose that, oh, yeah. that uh, cedar. Yeah. But, uh, you know, as, as Awana leaders, as leaders in the church, uh, our role is, is not to sit back. Uh, no. it, it, this takes intentionality, mm-hmm. this passing along this, right. the fire, the, we, the word of God. So we have to take the action, and we'll dive into this more, but we have to take the action to pass it on. Right. But we also have to take the action to guard it and keep it strong. Oh, yeah. So we have a strong ember that's going to start a fire when we right. pass it on. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Yeah. So so this is really, really exciting. And, and I just thought this was a great picture of uh, our role as disciple makers. Right. And the book really points out... Um, the idea that the fire was resisted, the, the, the fire has been passed on for generations, right? right? If we are here today because somebody was a fire carrier, and uh, the church is here today because people were fire carriers, and these fire carriers had to go through things that we wouldn't even necessarily uh, imagine, right? We, we just see that all through history. Why? Well, because the enemy wants the ember to die. Yeah, and so everything in the world is trying to extinguish uh, the ember. Everything in the world is trying to put the fire out, and that list seems to be growing. Yeah, on a daily basis. So, so we need to work hard to keep our fire going. But as we pass that on, we need to be so intentional to guard that and pass that on to to others. And as we do that, then we need to be able to, as we've given it to them, blow on their flame as well, yeah. right, and, and stir that flame. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't stop, you know. There, there's that, I think that uh, culture we've created within, even within our, some of our churches, it's like, okay, we get them to the point of faith, and, and, and then we, at some level, we don't have anything beyond that. Right. Or, or very little, right? right I, How do we help them get from that baby infancy, you know, that little ember, and to, to grow into a flame and, that, and nurture that? relationship with christ and i i just finished a book that uh, they brought out the point that says uh, we as christians today we often treat baptism as a graduation service rather than uh like a welcome home from the hospital for a baby type of service okay you know yeah yeah. and so oh hey you've you've made it you've been baptized you'll figure it out whether it's a little kid an adult whatever it is and uh they don't have any idea what they're doing. Right. They're a baby Christian. So we really need to protect that. Uh, on page 73, something really struck me. Do you have anything else before we, we jump to that, well, Scott? I, I don't want yeah, to jump Yeah, no, that's, that's good. You know, so I, I really like in this in this uh, talking about, okay, you know, really talking about, being, you know, John 1, 1, in the beginning was a word, and talking about this concept of, uh, you know, the you know, light in, in the word of God. And there's a lot of references to, to light, right? And in him was life and that life was light, light of the man, right? Uh, the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has no understanding of it. Right. And I think mm-hmm. that's kind of what we're talking about, but this right. is scripture, right? Right. And, uh, one thing, uh, I, I just wanted to share, uh, here on, on 72 for centuries, mothers and fathers of all skin colors and nationalities have gathered their children around their knees, breathed, the fire of God's love into the children's hearts with the same story. Uh, preachers have carried the fire in their sermons. Missionaries have carried that story to the ends of the earth. And again, it's that multiplication that we're talking mm-hmm. about. And I just wanted to, you know, uh, just bring that back and, and talk about that. Well, that's so important because we often talk about on here the importance of, and we use, you know, I think I, I talk about Wednesday nights because for us, that's our that's when we have most of our kids' programs, right? And whenever you guys do Awana, and then we talk about Awana, and of course we've said this isn't just for Awana, but either way, uh, this is so important because I've been there, I know how hard it is when you get out of work, say on Wednesday, yeah. and you've got to come and deal with these little kids, and uh, they're maybe not so uh, so well-behaved, or they're, you know, they're, it's, it can be a struggle. But if we come with this idea that this isn't just listening to kids say a verse and 
get them through the night, play some games, and and give them a little candy or you know whatever we do through the night, make them be quiet while somebody teaches them a Bible lesson. But if tomorrow night when you get out of work and you start heading for church, you think you remind yourself and you start prayerfully thinking about, I have a fire that God has given me, that light of the world. Mm. And now I have these kids and I have this one little tiny one hour mark right, to try to pass that flame on to them. Now everything else really doesn't matter, right? We Yeah, we can say verses, but what, even that, right? Let's make sure as we're saying them, we understand them. Let's whatever it is, but, but now we're, we're not just doing this for program's sake. We're trying there's to, there's a purpose. Th- there's it's a purpose. Intention out. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and it just like that, that ember getting put in a fire, right? If you were to put an ember, ember in a fire, you're not going to have a, a roaring bonfire in seconds, right? No, you have to nurse that. You have to blow on that. It takes time. It takes you have to put little twigs, right? It, you have to know what you're doing. It can't you, be if, wet. If I right? were to do it, I would probably put it out. Yeah. So th- the point is, don't get discouraged when you leave after one one Wednesday night. Say, oh, yeah. And you're like, oh, that kid, kid le- listened to me for three minutes and he was on doing his thing. No, that maybe that was a tiny dry twig that you've laid on that, that little by little you're you're blowing those. Yeah, I, f- I those feel embers. at times it seems like we want to – uh, have instant like fruit, yeah. instant gratification for the work we're doing. But this, this is not that instant thing. You know, this takes time and effort and, I may and, have, and struggle. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could get that fit flame going a little bit and then, oh my goodness, uh, it starts to rain or, you know, there's so many other variables. It gets really windy and it can snuff it out, you know, like there, and it, I'm, I, Speaking again of, of a fire, right? But also that that's true for discipleship. Yes, you can go through you know seasons of wow, we're uh, something's happening here. This is great, and then digression. Yes, and dis- absolutely discouragement. But do we keep going? You should. Yeah, we have yeah. to. We have to keep going. That's where our spine and heart comes in. Right. Right. So I'll just tell a quick story here um, that I think ties in with this that that I've that I've heard. It's a true story. Um, there was a lady that uh, she this wasn't old. she was teaching Sunday school and she had this young man in Sunday school and he was just trouble he came in on the bus or, or maybe she picked him up but anyway he would come in every Sunday his parents didn't come he was he was trouble he was a struggle but she just kept praying for him she just kept pouring into him and he grew up in the church through I think you know into high school at some point he, he left the church and she lost contact with him mm. but she never quit praying for him right. she had invested and invested and one day he came back to be her pastor <laughs> wow. So that tells you it can take a lot of time, yeah. but we need to stick with it. Yeah. So, of course, uh, I'm sure that, that pastor had a special place in her heart after oh, certainly. that. You know? yeah. So just stick with it. Keep blowing on those flames. Any any uh, comments on that or, or stories that you've uh, seen in, in, your, in your life where, uh, you know, God has, uh, you, you may have been discouraged, but then out of, you know, uh, a situation you see God working in the midst of it, even though it might be at the time be, uh, inv- you know, you're not seeing the fruit, but then right. wow, all of a yeah. sudden, or or questions you may have uh, uh, regarding this this topic. You know, we're again, this is a conversation with you, uh, and we want you to uh, to jump in and and engage with us in this. Uh, you know, and boy, this is this is such an important topic, and I think we're gonna even dive further here as we talk about, okay, uh, you know, in, in our, in today's culture and, uh, you know, there, there's a lot, uh, against that ember. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But there always has been. Oh, certainly. Right? And I mean, you think, think about Acts, about read Acts. Oh yes. And, uh, we're, we're towards the end of preaching through Acts and, uh, Paul would agree a hundred percent then that there is a whole lot trying to blow out the ember. Certainly. So if we do move on now, page 73, maybe this is a little uh, sidetrack in a sense, but I think this really stuck out to me. Um, They talk about how at so many points in world history, um, the fire could have been uh, extinguished. It could have been put out, Mm. all right? Uh, The story could have been buried and forgotten. They talk about that. But uh, generation after generation of fire carriers kept it going. Why? Because Jesus promised. I will mm. build my church. It will happen. And the and the gates, gates of hell of are not going to prevail against it. Right. Right? So um, 
w- what really stuck out to me with that is we feel like we're in. Do we believe days. that promise? Well, we should. We absolutely should. Right. And we can talk about that. It's farther in the chapter. We'll maybe talk about okay. that a little bit more. But um, we absolutely should believe that promise. And here's a question. Do you believe God will build his, his church in any culture? Because mm. did, Jesus didn't put, say, well, I'm going to build my church if the country is, in, is free. Right. Or I'm going to build With my all these church. contingencies. Right. I'm going to build my church if you have a, a godly president or, or whatever. No, God, he, Jesus said, I will build my church. Again, Old Testament, what was going on? Mm. Yeah. The Romans oh, yeah. and the Jews were trying to put that flame out. Oh, yeah. All right. So, so God, Christ is going to build his church. So my thought here is, as we kind of, I just see so many Christians from a pastor's standpoint. This mm. is my my pastor yep. coming out and speaking, yeah. you know, in me now. But we're freaking out mm. because the world is falling apart, right? We're we're freaking out about it, and we're we're worrying about all these political things, and we're worrying about, um, you know, who's in charge, and we're worried about what's not going right, and we're just that's where our focus is. Mm. Yeah, you've and- got. And that's just being flamed. Oh yeah, because it's there everywhere. Yeah, right? as we're so, engaged daily, momently. I mean, the the statistics about screen time, you know, on our on our our iPads and our phones mm-hmm. and stuff and TV, whatever, is is like astronomical, right? <laughs> and, yeah. and so we're feeding that fear. Absolutely. So my my challenge is, it's been bad before and it's been worse before. So we need to quit freaking out <laughs> mm. and carry that ember. And remember, if you got, if we're freaking out, if we're if we're ha- upset and we're worried and we're focused on things that are that don't matter as much, because remember, this home, this land, it, it's not even our home. Right. We're just here temporarily. We're just ambassadors plugged in here for a we little while. Sing that song. <laughs> no, you know, I mean, they'll all get off. <laughs> this. So, so why worry? If yeah. we do that, though, what is the fire? What is the ember that we're going to pass on to our kids? An ember of fear. An ember of fear. And we have already proven, as the book points out in 2050, it's going to be worse than it is today. So let's teach them to live without fear. Right. And just put your head down and carry the ember. Make disciples. Do what God has called us here to do. Because it was no accident that you and I are here today, and it's no accident that our kids are going to be here in 2050. God planned that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you agree with us? Do you agree? quiet today. Yeah, it is kind of quiet out there today. We got to wake up. Is it? It's rainy here, so maybe it's just a rainy, yeah, maybe lazy rainy day, day around. Rainy day, in, rainy day in, uh, in Michigan certainly could be, but uh, yeah, no, I you're you're hitting on the head there, and I mean, I'll even be honest. At times in my life, I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, COVID and all these things get me worked up. You know, some of the some of the things that I'm seeing about our uh, freedoms that we mm-hmm. are losing and. Uh, but yeah, we're not in Roman day, <laughs> right? <laughs> you right. know, we, we we know we're not being uh, beheaded for our faith yet, but right. There may be a day, and, and I know people are are saying, "Well, you know, it's it's not so much what's going on, but it's if we if we give it up here, then we're gonna have we're gonna mm, give up more what's later." The next or, step? And I understand that, but it's not for me to worry about. I mean, I'm not trying to say we don't stand up for certain things, right. but I have a job to do. And, and sometimes by me standing up, and now we're jumping into the spine and heart thing, so I don't want to really yeah. spend a lot of time in that but well, until we get there. But, but by me, sometimes by me standing up to defend my right, mm. it pushes away somebody. Now I don't have an opportunity to win them to Christ. Right. And are, are my rights and freedoms, are they, are they that important? Paul, they were not important to Paul. Oh, no. Yeah. Paul said, whatever it takes, I need to go to Rome. And how did he get there? Right. In prison, in chains. Yep. Right. And the ministry he was doing in that situation. Yeah. <laughs> Many people stop. said, Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit warned him, if you go to Jerusalem, you're going to be in chains. And where did he go? Right. Jerusalem. Yep. Because he had a job to do. Yeah. It didn't waver from it. Wow. Does that have implications for today? Yeah. I, it absolutely yeah. it does. It really does. Certainly. Well, I love as they continue this conversation here, Scott, and I think that really pl- plays into just what we talked about, rolls into what's next. They talk about the idea of the church fanning the flames of the fire carriers. We talked about we need to fan our own flames. The church needs to be fanning the flames so that the fire carriers can go out into the world. 
Right. Okay. So how do we do that? I know I'm, I'm setting you up with a bunch of questions today. <laughs> but how do we do that? How do we fan the flames? I have some pretty specific ideas on that. So you might give the wrong answer. So be careful. No, I'm just Well, <laughs> I think for uh, number one is, you know, uh, being the, be with a body of believers. Okay. Yeah, that starts. So they can fan your flame. They yeah, can't if you're not with you're, them. If you're not there right. or interacting, you know, right. and, and when the door, church doors are open, you know, being a part of that ministry and uh, being the hands and feet of Jesus, being a part of the body, you know, that's a right. big part of Not just coming to church on Sunday or in this case, right? We, I'm sure you see this. We, I see this. I come to church on Sunday and I do my time on Wednesday with the kids, so I'm done. Okay. Right? Right. Now, we, it's beyond that's, that. Right. That's yeah. not what we're talking. Yeah. You've got to be involved. You've got to be in in the church doing. Yeah. So then, obviously, and we talked about it before, diving in the Word of God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and then that then the piece of discipleship, which we talk a lot about, you know, is is in, in, ensuring not only our kids, but that we are discipling others, adults, right? Yes. And 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 that should be then. How is my, is my flame going to be fanned? Enough just by coming to church on Sunday no. and hearing a sermon. No, no. is Again, it going to be an hour and a half out of how many hours? And a even week? if I if I'm in the Word almost every day, what happens when things get hard and I just start giving up? Right, we need somebody to walk. with oh, us. Oh, certainly, yeah. Right? That, life, said, that life, that right? life, absolutely. Yeah. We need somebody to walk with us. We have. <laughs> there are too many people trying to put the flame out. We have to put that many more people. Trying to keep the flame going. Well, and let's not forget, obviously, our relationship with the Lord, right? Uh, right. That is a, a big piece in this puzzle that I well, think Well, that's kind of what we, we're surrounding, sometimes right? Sometimes we All may, of this yeah. goes, that, really, that's, I, that's the flame, right? Yeah, or that that's is the a, ember right. that, we're, we're, that we're trying yep. to blow on and grow, absolutely. And then the other side of that is just uh, where, where I think, in, in my experience, uh, in, in seeing churches as I've studied and learned and looked at my own experience in churches, a failure to thoroughly equip right. fire carriers to carry that flame. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. And and I think that speaks true even with within, okay, I'm now diving into Juana's world. Uh, and, you know, as a lot of our people are, are part of this uh, in that context, you know, how important is that training, uh, training your leaders yeah. in, in what discipleship mm-hmm. is and, and the vision, you know, because it's, it's not what it used to be where you, you're just listening to a child say a verse, you know, there's right. way more involved now, uh, with the direction we're taking and, and discipling these kids. Uh, it, it's, it's life on life. It's, it's building into its relationship with these kids. It's, there's more to it. And so we need to encourage each other and have that training that is so important. The, I, 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 I speak something here to my, some of my churches. You know, it takes more than a, a two-hour get-together and, and, and talking about, okay, the year ha- passing out the schedule and, yep. you know, okay, this is what's coming. And child protection, yes, we need to fill this stuff out. But the training <laughs> needs to be so much more. We need to have so much what? more... In, in depth and uh, reminders and, you know, getting the same page. It's just, it's, it's important work that we're doing. We talked about this in our last stream. Scott, what should we assume? What have we learned that we should assume? Nothing. Nothing. Can't. So don't assume that your leaders know what it looks like even to, 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 to run a small to, group. To run a small or, group. Yeah. Right. Do they understand that, yes, they need to say verses, but it's okay if they don't for a, for a week. It's okay if you do this. Do they even know if they, if they, start talking to Johnny and Johnny brings up something. Do they have right. any idea how to speak to that? Do they have any idea where to find any resources to help them with that? Right. Right. Um, you said it takes more than a two hour. Here you go. And off you go. Well, what about an opportunity to say, Hey, I've been talking to Johnny about this and I don't really know what to do from here. Any, any helps. Right. And you know, uh, Awana provides a lot. We, we're Big time into tr- leadership training. Yes, it's so important. We we recognize this. You know, you could go to Wanna Basics online and w- the incredible training that is there on multiple levels uh, to help us better, so we don't assume any things of our leaders. Right. Make you know, hey, 
have your leaders go to ABO and <laughs> it's online. They can do it from their couch. It's really easy. You know, they don't have to go and spend five hours, right. uh, you know, coming to a, a, a training in your church or going, you know, traveling, you know, five hour, two hours to another location for this training. Right. They can do it right there. It's, it's really easy and, and it helps them with that, that higher level vision of mm-hmm. what, the, what they're doing and why they're doing it. And then also specifically their role in the club, what, you know, help them really digest their, the important key aspects of what they're doing on a, on a Wednesday or Sunday night. And I tell you what, it's such an incredible resource. Check it out. We'll put it in the, in the comments, but uh, you know, there, training is important. There's an, there's another, there's another uh, resource they can use too, Scott. There's this Facebook page called the resilient oh, conversation yeah. with Scott. <laughs> yeah, and PJ, exactly. Yeah. Right. So really that's been our goal with the Facebook that's page, this is about. not yeah. just to stream. We really, we say it all the time. And, and uh, I know that some people just aren't into Facebook, you know, but yeah. uh, I am involved in, you know, on YouTube, I would not be where I, I probably, I probably would have quit YouTube if I didn't have a group of people and it's through Facebook because they live all over the all over the world. Literally, I mean, there's missionaries in other countries. There's, yep. but it's a group of Christian YouTubers. We we zoom together sometimes. We we support each other on Facebook. We we give tips and hints. There's no stingy like, oh, I figured this out and I'm keeping it for myself. It's a, oh, look what I learned. I'm going to tell. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And that's what we need to be. That's what we want our page to be is a, as a place for people to come. And, uh, and, and help with that. Yeah. And, you know, we're stronger when we, we work together. I think we right. talk a lot about that. And so to come together and to encourage each other through Facebook or through other avenues is, is just so, so important. Did you read this comment? I have not yet, but I know my, <laughs> my brother Kevin Proctor out there. It's good to see you on. He says, I guess the question is, I'm skipping down. The question is, how do we start the conversation or how do we start the training? Mm. He says, I agree most churches don't. Yeah. And you know why I'm smiling, right? <laughs> That's a whole different live stream. Kevin, reach out to me. Seriously, <laughs> reach out to me. Our church is yeah. uh, about five and a half, six years now down a very intentional road of equipping disciple makers, training and assuming nothing. Right. I was literally just texting with somebody before I got on here, helping her with somebody she's discipling, helping her walk through learning how to do that. Right. That's what we're about. That excites me to be able to do that. Oh yeah. Like we, we have to be so intentional. Uh, so, so Kevin reach out to me and if you have any questions, put it on here. Um, check out my YouTube channel. Uh, Scott and I did a video after, actually after our last live stream, there's some stuff on he there. Saw it. He did it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. All right. So, and, and we want to do more of those actually yeah, and answer certainly. some of your yeah. questions and how I'm not that I have, how do you, how do you get going with that? Right, how do right. we get going? Yeah. Right. And, and with, I mean, I just went to lunch at your church and we had certainly it was like a three yeah. hour conversation. Yep. And that's a broader scope I yeah. think within the context of Awana, you know, there, there's definitely resources and tools out there. And uh, it's it starts with having desire f- to do it, yeah. right? Really, right? And and then finding and it the starts, tools. It starts at the top, whether it's church yes. or Awana, right? right? Oh, the certainly. pastor has to have yeah. that heart. The heart. Uh, our wind, our Sunday nights are specifically for equipping people, right? You know, that's a, we don't have a sermon. We I teach. I, I teach very specific, very yep. you know, like kind of like we're doing here. Let's get the wheels going yeah. where the boots hit the ground, kind of thing. Um, and so it starts at the top, but even as Awana leaders, which he says he's not, but even for Awana leaders, right, be, just put some time into saying, okay, how if you're an Awana commander, how am I going to do that? Now, now we believe thoroughly that discipleship should be done um, on one-on-one or, or one-on-a-couple, not like this big thing. But when you have the heart for disciple-making, even as, say, an Awana commander, your heart is automatically going to be to – well, I'm not just here to run a club. I'm here to disciple the leaders who are discipling right. the kids, right? You're blowing on their ember so they can so they can pass that that ember on. Uh, so on your own, just just come up with some some ways to be able to yeah. some th- some uh, some training, come up with some some resources. Yeah, I was encouraged there's a church uh, actually my home church uh, that uh, put together the the leadership so sat down and we just, Hey, we want to create a, a video for our, uh, 
specifically children's ministry mm-hmm. uh, leaders on, on the gospel. And so, it, you know, probably about an hour video or half an hour video, just you know, details about sharing the gospel, things to think about. And I was encouraging to, to see that because those things, we need to see those things happen and yeah. helping our leaders and training because we can't what? We just we spent, can't assume anything. No, we just spent several weeks on Sunday nights walking through what that looks like with our people. Yep. And allowing them to have conversations, conversations through that, yep. right? Hey, here's what I'm struggling with. Well, what about this? Yep. What does this look like? What are we expected? Same with our leaders. Right. right? Yeah. And it starts, you know, and, and to come back to Kevin's, it starts with one. You know, it starts yes. with, you know, one like Kevin, right, that's out there saying, hey, I want to do something. Yeah. I want to I want to disciple, be in the discipleship of And just of one. pick one person to and, disciple. And just don't go get, for it. Yeah, yeah, don't get overwhelmed yeah. by any means. By yeah, any means, stuff. don't do that. We, in fact, that's... And I know Kevin is, but anyway. <laughs> oh, that's what we use. We, we, we have three ones right. in our church, and that's, we just keep it, keep it focused, win one, Lead one, follow one. Yep. Different, different topic, but just find one person, right? Yep. And do what you're supposed to do, and it'll spread, just like, just like fire. <laughs> you know, yeah. it spreads, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. You're, you're yeah. blowing on the flame. Yep. Um, Certainly. All right. Well, it seems like in our conversations we hit this, and then we gotta. <laughs> yeah. Well, get, hey, you know, we get we kind of get through some ideas, and you know, hey, uh, if you're out there watching, I know we have several people watching right now. You know, we'd love for you to, to join in. And thanks, Kevin, for, yeah, for jumping absolutely. on. Absolutely. You know, I don't know if David's still there, Chaplain David Dzolik. I believe he's retired now, but uh, yeah. Hey, if there's any, you have a thought or uh, you know something that's out of this conversation, we'd love uh, to to engage. Uh, it really, you know, you guys really help us, right? To, oh, to set the tone yeah. and the direction sometimes yep. where we're going in our in our conversation. I'm um, certainly we could j- dive into further part of this chapter, but and there's more here. Uh, but if there's something that y- you know you would like to talk about and bring up, this is the time to do it. We are uh, just we uh, want this to be a conversation. This has been our intention from the beginning that this is yeah. not us. It's 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 people out there like yourself that are watching be a part of this that can you know help and teach us because we're not experts yeah. right in any way we've but had we've had several times where people have come out and said well this is what we're doing yeah right right yeah and, and on our helpful. facebook page please if you have a question like this like just say hey what are some good resources i want to be yep. able to train my leaders what are some resources our page is growing so well and we you know m- many people watch this after i i, I talked to several people today that i was inviting yesterday and say hey we'd love to be well i can't because of this right but right. I'll, I'll i'll watch it afterwards so if you're watching this now and and you're you know you have a thought or something that's jumping in your mind yeah post it we yeah. we would be encouraged by that but also there are others that we can that maybe and be if encouraged you're watching by it afterwards post yeah. it even though you're like well yeah. it's not live well we're we watch our page and we we want to have that conversation with you we want others to be in there yeah and it's lunchtime now for most right yeah so, so that was the plan yeah. Yeah. well scott i'm wondering i'm thinking this might be a good spot to to land the plane i think so we've we, got we can, a lot more ahead yeah of us we have a lot chapter. more in this chapter i think we could uh, certainly uh uh pull out some more but uh yeah we'd love to uh continue the conversation yeah. continue chapter five so let us know put some comments on our on our facebook page especially uh let us know some things maybe that you've been thinking about and uh we have an announcement to make scott you oh, we I, do. yeah we do I, I didn't i forgot to tell you about it. <laughs> no we've talked about it we've talked about it all right here's the announcement we are trying whoa that's loud <laughs> we are trying to get to 200 likes on our Facebook oh, yes. page by the end of the year, yes, right? And yes, yes. we have some gifts, thanks to Scott and Awana, for yes. you. So once we hit 200, yeah, uh, we'll do a little more pushing that. But, man, please, share our page. Get people yep. to like it. Uh, if you're just watching you haven't liked it, like it. Take, take a minute and, and like the page. Help it grow. Uh, pass it around your church. This does not have to be Awana leaders at all. We say right. you know, there's three people. Three people we target. Pastors. Pastors. Youth leaders and or parents. kids ministry leaders, whatever it is, right? right. And yep. parents. And parents. Yep. Exactly. So it doesn't really, everything we're talking about, it doesn't have to be a wanna. It, it's disciple making. Yep. All right. Well, thanks so much Thank for you watching guys. today. I hope you enjoyed this. We'll talk to you next month. Next time. See you later. Bye.